Hello and welcome to the tutorial Responsive Layout with WebIQ. Before creating any WebIQ app, we recommend to create a sketch of how the app should look like. So we begin with the frame, which just indicates where our screen starts and ends. Inside our app, we want to have a bar at the top, which we call header. At the bottom of the app, we want to have a footer. In the middle, we want to have a content area, where the main content of our HMI app is shown. In the header, we want to add a home button. And we also want to add a user button. And we also add a logo next to the user button on the right hand side. This is what our app should look like in the scope of part one of this tutorial. After creating our empty app, go to the layout manager. In the middle you see the layout area where our app is shown. Right now it is empty. On the right hand side you see different cockpits. The configuration cockpit, the style cockpit and the hierarchy cockpit. You can simply switch between those cockpits using the tabs at the top. If you go to the hierarchy you will see the hierarchy of the HMI. At the top we always have the root container, which is the container that includes all of the widgets and containers inside your WebIQ app. As you see, it only takes up a small amount of space right now. So as we want to create a full screen app, we need to set the height to 100% so that it utilizes all of the available space. For that, we go to the style cockpit and set the height under dimensions to 100%. And as you see, it now uses all of the available space. The width of containers is set to 100% by default, so we do not need to change that. Now let's create the app as we have defined before. In the hierarchy, we see that we have the content container. However, we still need to add a header and a footer. To do that, we open the widget list and click on Layout Container, which shows the available layout container types in WebIQ. Now we drag a horizontal flex container into the hierarchy below the root. And we repeat this step and add another container. Now remove the container to the top. So right now we have the structure header, content and footer. However, the names are a bit misleading as they have been generated automatically. So we now rename the header to header. Then we select the bottom container and rename it to footer. Now we have the hierarchy as we want to have it. We have the root container and below we have three child containers named header, content and footer. Right now we only see one container highlighted in our layout. To see all of the outlines of the containers, right click on the container and click show outline. You can do that for any WebIQ widget in your app. This allows you to see the structure of your containers and allows you to debug your layout in case you experience any issues. For now, we're going to hide all of the outlines. We added a horizontal flex container to our layout. You might wonder what exactly a horizontal flex container is. Horizontal flexing means that all widgets inside that container are aligned along the horizontal axis one by one. This axis is called main axis. The vertical alignment of widgets inside a horizontal flex container is called cross axis. 
So now let's style the header. To set the background color, select the header in the hierarchy and click on the style tab. Now scroll down to the IQ styling where we will find the background color and if we click on it, we will see a pop-up that allows us to choose a color. If we click on that color, the Windows color picker is shown, where you can select any color you like. In this case, I will be using gray. If I now click OK, you see that the background color has been changed. I can now do the same for the footer. Now to add the widgets we want to have inside our header, I select the header once again. Remember, we want to have two buttons and one logo in our header. So now open the widget list, click on widgets and there you will find a button. You can now drag the button either into the layout area or into the hierarchy. As you see in both cases, the element is highlighted where the element will be dropped into. So in this case, I will drop this into the header. Now our button has been added to the header. As per our sketch, we want to have a home button. So we are now going to rename it. And now we also remove the label because we want to show an icon. Therefore, we check the Show Icon checkbox, select Icon Source and select a picture we want to use. In this case, I already have the images in my app. And now we want to have a second button. So you can either drag and drop it again or you can just use the Copy and Paste buttons. I will be using the Ctrl C and Ctrl V shortcuts to copy and paste a widget from the clipboard. First of all, we rename the new button to User button. And then we choose a different icon. Okay. Now the logo is missing. So we open the widget list and we have an image widget which I will now drag into the container right between the two buttons. You can always move widgets inside the hierarchy by dragging and dropping them inside the hierarchy. So let's rename this to logo. And you also see here that um, the header has resized automatically because the image placeholder is larger than the buttons. And this also resulted in the stretching of these buttons. Now I replace the placeholder image with a logo. Okay. So the only thing left now is to align the logo and the image. With a horizontal flex container, there is a simple way to do that. Because we can use auto margins. So for this, I have the image selected and I click on margin left and set it to auto. This will automatically use all of the available space on the left hand side of the image to align the image. This also pushes the user button to the right. So according to our sketch, we are almost finished. However, there is not any space between the uh, edges and borders, so we want to add some padding. For that, I have the container selected and I click on any of these four padding settings. If I now enter 16 for 16 pixel padding, it is assigned to the right. And if I now click apply, to all directions, it will be added to all of the four sides. 
So the only thing left to do for this tutorial now is to make the content larger. As you know, it should use all of the available space. For that, we can use Flex Grow. If we set this to 1, it uses all of the space. If I now use the header container and set a flex grow of 1 there as well, you will see that both containers now have the same size. The flex grow values are relative to each other. So if I now set 10, it is 10 times larger. If I set this for the content as well, they have the equal size again. So it doesn't matter which kind of values we add here, but the relationship of these values are, uh, is important. So I now set this back to one and I clear this value. And now we have completed our app. If we now save and open the preview, then we will see our responsive WebIQ app. If you resize the window, you will see what responsive really means. So the button and the logo on the right hand side always stick to the right. Whereas the button on the left is always on the left. And the footer is always at the very bottom. So this concludes this tutorial. In the next part, we are going to take care of the content container.